go on and on a um, on a on a cherry picker heart thing. Uh, with me with the laser pointer say you can drop something, put some beads there, put some beads there. It was so it's done on a one A4 sheet and then put on the transparency and then the transparency photocopy onto acetate and that was um, then projected and then drawn onto the wall and then black card, the first layer of black card glued on. This is the and then, then beads put on after that. The beads are hanging down because the idea is that it's, it's, uh, the beads are being torn down. So the beads are, uh, it should be a double layer of black card and beads, and the beads have been ripped off, so the whole thing is kind of, kind of deteriorating, shall we say. Yeah. Yeah. This is a um, heraldic lion, a generic heraldic lion, which this one happens to be the lion which is the symbol of the city of Amsterdam, Amsterdam's lions. Uh, these images here, these are all from a Nazca pot here, uh, one, of the, one of the museum's treasures, uh, a, a Nazca pot from Peru, and it's part of the design in the pot. And again, a lot of this has got personal significance for me. My mother, who, who used to be a ceramicist in Diana, and uh, her and uh, another woman were would, would paint all these what we call Amerindian designs. It's kind of like a part, supposed to be positive in the sense of positive representation of how bad slavery is, stuff like that, but it ends up being a kind of, um, I don't know, exotic kind of image. I just quite like it because of, of, of the wild expression in her face and stuff like that. Uh, and I, I, I'm also, I, I tend to work with automatic pilot from a bank of images. And this, this piece just seemed to fit with, with, with this particular um, section here. Uh, what else? Going up above, this is an invention. The, 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 this the thing above it is sort of an invention loosely, and very loosely based on the Guyanese coat of arms. The Guyanese coat of arms above the shield, which most coats of arms have this around the shield is a crown, um, an Amerindian crown, the cacique's crown. Um, and so, so the Guyana coat of arms, like this, is, is a mixing of cultures. So there may be there's an Amerindian thing there, the, the whole design is European, and there are all different cultural aspects jammed, fit, fitted, it, fitted into it. So this is sort of my variation of that. And that section there is all again mixed up from this one Nazca part. Uh, how this was done, I should say, is the museum sent me discs to London, to, to back, back, back to London, and I sat down and jiggled it and worked out and um, irritated for about a month or so before I figured out how this thing would work. Uh, above, um, there are two figures with what look like swords, which I figure aren't swords, but, but there are two figures uh, from a textile downstairs, the Paracas textile. The Paracas textile, um, I'm presuming it's from Paracas, but I don't know, it's, it's, it's Peruvian textile, yeah? And it's completely, from a distance, it looks like a really knackered, crap piece of rubbish, basically, you know? But when you get close up, this, the, the border is where the, where the, 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 the magic is in this thing. The border of this textile is made up of tiny, tiny figures, uh, all, all knitted, almost semi-three-dimensional. So that fig the figures near the top, one on either side, identical, are taken from this Paracas textile. And they're about, in, in reality, they're about that big, so about, about that, that high. And they've been sort of expanded out, so it's sort of blown up with some kind of superpower or something like that. The, the, fig the, the mask in the middle, that's, um, uh, that's a, a I, I'm very confused about, about this one here, but I use this image a lot because I've used a lot of, um, of Tibetan images which are completely covered in skulls and they're very, very violent, very, look really scary, but it's not about that, it's, it's about some, it's battling your own demons. I'm not an expert on Buddhism, yet, so don't hold me up to that. I, I just find I, I, I find things which look scary quite fascinating. I've 
and uh, I would come to museums like this one and draw, whether it be Tibetan, Indian masks, or Chinese masks, or African masks, I would draw them to try and overcome my nervousness, my fear of these particular things. Um, today, it's now become part of my language. It's not a big deal. For me, it's just part of what I do. Uh, what else to say to this? These here, I, I've been obsessed with these symbols for a while. It's, um, the cross and the star and the crescent. I just, use, I just use it a lot. I just... Oh, it's kind of personal. It's about all stuff to personal. I mean, I'm just interested in how people use symbols to go and fight each other, you know. That's my part. That's the personal thing of mine. Um, what I should say about this, the, these bits coming out here, the plumes coming off left, right and centre, they're, they're again from this um, per, from this Peruvian Nazca pot, and it's, it goes through this whole thing like a virus, yeah? And it's a bit like in Guyana, most people live on the coastline. The coastline is, oh, it must be about two miles deep, and then you've got this massive interior where it's largely empty. Not many people live in, 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 in the bush, basically. Not many people live there. But you have this, again, you have this constant feeling that there's this thing, this thing in the past, this historical thing, which I suppose we call it, in Guyana we call it Amerindian history, as opposed to being in, in America, we call it the pre Columbian thing or something like that. But the, 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 it sort of runs through, for me, it sort of runs through Guyanese identity really, really as a real strong thing. It makes, it makes Guyana very different to any of the other Caribbean countries. Um, on an island, it's, it's kind of easier to get rid of the natives than, 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 than when, when you're dealing with the mainland. Because basically, when the, um, uh, in the colonial times, when the Europeans came to Guyana, they stayed in the coastline and the Indians stopped flying. We'll just go in the interior, we'll go in the bush, we'll disappear. And so, I don't know. I haven't talked about this piece before, so I'm still figuring it out myself. And what happens with this work is I tend to talk about it, and then I go away and think about it. Oh, that's what it's really about, you know what I mean? That's what it may, it, uh, what it really may be about, to have elements of what I talked about, but it's something, it's, it's maybe something different. The beads, I should say, are, when I first started doing this, it, 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 I, I, I found these beads in a party shop in Atlanta, and they are Halloween beads. So I now buy Halloween beads wholesale, which I kind of find strange. Then. Oh, and the, the way the process, the process is developed, these bits of black tape were practical. They started off as a way of just holding the um, the cord and beads in place, but then. The practical thing started to look aesthetically right, almost as if it's being stitched together, you know? And so that the practical thing became part of the drawn element, so it took become part of the flow. And then, then part of it was covered in gunge. Uh, I'm a messy, I, I, a messy artist and I try to turn mess into a virtue. So the whole thing is kind of got the thing bits of stuff coming up. And it's a bit like cobwebs as well, it's a bit like the whole thing's been attacked by spiders or something like that.